good to see everybody. Um, we got a, a few injuries uh, or sickness that we've had in a couple muscle pull things, but uh, nothing, nothing that uh, is big. And it is the off season, so I'm gonna just kind of leave, leave it at that. Um, you know, listen, our hearts go out for the, these tragedies that are that have taken place here the last couple of weeks, and and uh, you know whether it was in New York or Texas. I mean, that's a uh, um, it's a shame that that's where things are at, but um, I, I know through good people they'll we'll get that all straightened out. But for those families, you know, again, our hearts go out to them. So with that, um, it's great to have these guys back in here. We've had a good turnout. Uh, they're working hard within the rules of what you can do. So um, and, and they're competing the best they can. Uh, but you know, again, within the rules. So. Uh, it's good to introduce all this new stuff to uh, to the new players, and they seem to be very responsive, picking it up. And uh, they had some carryover from phase two to phase three, uh, which is which has been good to see that. So, with that, time's yours. <clears throat> Kobe, when you see the receivers out there, you had a good keen eye on them. What are you seeing from some of the guys, and how they're just trying to all mesh them together? Yeah, they uh, kind of like what I see. Um, big, big guys. Um, that they can run and play physical, you know, again, within, within the rules. There's no bump and run, so <clears throat> they haven't had to answer that part of it. But, um, you know, they, they're big, strong guys. And I, I kind of, I mean, I like that, what I'm saying. Uh, again, I think it's important the more reps we can get with them and Pat, I think that's that helps. So. Didn't, yeah, you're fine. Didn't see McCall. <clears throat> Yeah, McCall, he's one of the ones that he tweaked a hamstring uh, early there, so yesterday. So especially when you had the opportunity to work with some of those receivers and running backs in Texas, do you see a lot of carryover from that? Today? Say that one more time. Oh. Patrick had the opportunity oh, to work with yeah, yeah, you can see that, yeah, the times that he, he worked with the guys in Texas, uh, that has carried over. He was able to hit the base routes, and you know, they weren't able to, uh, they did a little bit of putting the routes together, but some of the new things, um, you know, Pat's working through with them, and uh, it's been it's been good. I mean, the way better execution uh, th than you'd think for a bunch of new guys together. So. Coach, with all the new <clears throat> offensive players that you're going to have this year, what's it do for you? I mean, I, you know, they, they consider you an offensive mind. Do, do you like seeing a play at night trying to design new plays, knowing that you got bigger, bigger, more physical receivers than what you've had in, in the previous? <clears throat> what, what type of challenge is it? Yeah, so we got we've got a lot in the um, that we've shown over the years here. So we've covered a lot of bases with the with the volume of plays that we've had. So we've, we're able to dust a few things off and put them back in, and uh, that maybe are more conducive to a bigger player. But um, other than that, I mean, it's kind of the same same stuff we've been doing. Uh, these guys have fit right in doing it. <clears throat> uh, the one one thing that you notice is that they've got size, but then they can run also, and that's uh, there's good speed out there, which which helps. On a, on a housekeeping note, the league uh, a few months ago at the meeting back in March, uh, I guess mandated an offensive assistant. Where are you all at with the end of that? And have you, are you all looking at like any HBCU coaches to give them that one year? Yeah, so Danny Williams was promoted into that, that spot. He was kind of doing that anyways, but he's promoted into that spot. Yeah, so. Um, and he's he's been in the quarterback room and, and – uh, and played it in college and so on. So he's a nice, uh, nice addition. He's doing just a, a bit more on the offensive side than what he was. And then what the, what the league had this past week with Eric Bieniemy going out there. What is it that <coughs> he would pick up differently than you know he's had injuries over the last few years? I mean, what about this meeting that these past two weeks? Is he going to get any different? <coughs> yeah. So I talked to EB and I also talked to Tim Terry, who also went out there. From uh, the general manager standpoint, so they have both head coaching and general manager teaching session. Um, both guys said it was phenomenal. Both guys have been around, so they've seen different programs that have taken place, but they were really impressed by what the league presented to them. And uh, my hat goes off to the owners for showing up and being there and help educate. Um, I think that's very important, um, and it's not talk. I mean, they were there and. They, they were sharing things that they look at um, as owners um, and when hiring a head coach and a general manager. Invaluable. So I, I'm, I'm glad it worked out. Well, I know 
Troy Vincent, Roger Goodell spent a lot of time organizing it, and it really came off well. Coach, when it comes to uh, Orlando Brown Jr., you asked about his attendance today because obviously it's voluntary, but how is his staff going? Is there any update when it comes to maybe the talks with him? Um, no, you know, he's still working to get an agent is what he's doing. He's interviewing these different people. So once he gets that taken care of, we'll be able to be able to roll. Um, I know he's working out um, down in Florida, so he is getting his workouts. Coach, you had mentioned during rookie mini camp, you would hope Sky Moore would be ready for uh, OTAs. It seems like he was kind of limited out there. Was yeah. that because of a setback, or you just barely well, he, he, he hurt his hamstring before he got here. He hurt his hamstring a bit. He's, he's got big hamstrings to hurt, so I mean, he, he, he's built down on that lower body. So um, we're just letting that thing heal up, and then he's he's chomping at the bit to get in there and go, but just kind of letting that ride right now. Andy, with the big wide receivers that you mentioned, maybe testing off some old plays. Was yeah. there some self scout that told you in the offseason <clears> that there was a point of emphasis to get maybe some bigger targets? No, that, that's kind of what was there, and the guys we liked, and it just. We've got a little bit of everything for everybody if, that we can draw from. And so, um, you know, we, we dusted a few things off for the bigger guys and th that we think they do well after watching their tape. And uh, so we'll put a couple things in there. Can't tell you what they are, but we'll put them in. With, with the secondary, Andy, um, you know, it's the first chance that you're getting to look at uh, a guy like Trent McDuffie and, and Justin Reed sort of playing off of one another. Just what have you seen so far? And and someone else I just wanted to ask you about is uh, just where Legere is right now and, and sort of his off process. Yeah, he's getting, he's healing up and getting better. He's uh, doing some of the things versus air out there, so <clears throat> he'll be all right. He's just getting, it needs to be a little bit stronger and then he'll be, he'll be good to go. Um, with the new kids, uh, we're throwing them right in and giving them a chance to see uh, what this NFL thing's about. and. Uh, they, they've had some good plays. They've had some plays they got to work on. Uh, but uh, potential, and I'm not big on, but it looks like they've got, uh, you know, they've got good potential, great attitudes, very smart, uh, and work hard. So I'm, uh, though, I'm, it just, it's a matter of getting in and seeing everything. Coach, I don't know if you've seen this or I don't know if you've been made aware of this, but Deshaun McCoy was on a radio show this morning talking about his time here and kind of having a rift with Eric the enemy. And he said, that's the reason that Eric hasn't gotten a job because of his relationships with some players <coughs> that we haven't seen. Have you seen that? And Eric, even if you haven't seen Eric, what do you think about the way Eric is with players in the room? I know it's demanding, right? Yeah, sure. No, that's, uh, and it's sometimes it's hard on a, a veteran player that maybe their, their, their level, performance level isn't what it used to be. And it's hard to take sometimes, but he, he, he's going to push it. And try to maximize what you've got. Um, that's one of his strengths. He's no different than he is with you guys. He's going to come in and shoot you straight. Sometimes you want to hear it. Sometimes you don't. And uh, uh, you know, I'm a big LaShawn fan. I, he's, in my eyes, he's a future Hall of Fame running back. With a, if you look at statistically, he was tremendous. So, um, but he wasn't the youngest pup, uh, uh, you know, in the kennel here, man. He was, he was. Uh, uh, on backside, and sometimes that's hard to take. You don't think Eric's got any issues dealing with players, and that's holding him back from being a head coach? No, I, you know, I mean, you've been here, you've seen it, um, how he how he does, and you can see the love that the players have for him. I mean, he's got all these guys standing up for him and and saying positive things. Um, you know, so that's that's what it is. Yeah, he's a he's a heck of a football coach, and. Uh, you know, I'm disappointed that he hasn't had a chance, uh, but I'm optimistic that he's going to have one in the future. Here, so. Andy, with the, uh, with the way this, a couple more guys. Sorry. With the way this was set up, uh, obviously differently than years past. Obviously, trying to get back to normal, allowing Pat and the guys to sort of work in Texas. Was there anything that you, in talking with Pat, could take from that that can be applied here? Is it a smoother <laughs> transition? Just uh, yeah. what do you feel like you gather? Or the guys themselves gathered before you obviously had a more team. Yeah, well, yeah. No, I thought it was uh, it was important that they got together. Um, we we did things with them virtually, which I took as a learning from the last couple of years. So I felt comfortable doing that. I knew they were going to work out. They had a workout facility, <clears throat> and um, you can see that they got things done. Um, 
I think it's from my standpoint to them, it shows some trust that I have in them. And uh, it, it's, a, it, it's a long season that we've put together over the last few years, so, which means it's a short off season. And I, I think sometimes it's not bad just to step back an inch. And then you saw you guys felt the energy out there today. It's like ridiculous right now. So uh, we're getting these positive practices right now with tremendous amount of energy. Anyway. Coach, I know it's just day two of OTAs, but kind of an overarching question with all the new additions and then with a lot of key players leaving, do you feel like that core chemistry is still there? Again, I know it's early, but do you feel like you feel that with the players? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I believe it's there. Um, uh, I think it starts with Pat and Kels and, you know, some of the guys that are returning. We had some young guys that were returning that I think is, <clears throat> is real positive for, uh, for both sides of the ball and special teams. But I think, on the other hand, I think it's also a time to develop your own personality as a football team. And so they'll get in there and, and there'll be some highs, there'll be some lows as they work through everything. And, and then you're going to come out with, with what they are, you know, uh, what this team is. And um, but I, I feel confident we have the, the right personalities. I feel confident that we, uh, you know, we've got good players. So looking forward to it. We'll go left, we'll go Todd, Bahe, and Herbie. Uh, speaking of Pat, um, you've always talked about him being a mature guy, but you know, some of the pieces are falling into place in his life. Like, you know, he started a family. Now it's not a newborn, right? So it's a little bit easier there. He's gotten married. He's not having to deal with rehab from a surgery this season. Is he enjoying this offseason process a little bit more? Are you seeing, you know, are you seeing a, a, a positive benefit of the, the, those pieces of his personal life falling into place? Yeah, I've talked to him about that. I mean, he, he knows that. It is another step in life, and and he understands that. You know, he understands that that baby's gonna cry every once in a while, and then he's gotta get up and let mom relax. He gets all that. So, um, uh, but he's handling that with with good graces, and he's done. Uh, you know, the energy that he brought to bring the guys down to Texas, I think, was a real positive. So, um, you know, that's that's all part of the maturation process as you go forward. Right. Andy, you've got a young man from Nigeria with you that has quite a path here. I, I'm just curious if you've had any chance to speak with him or, or take in any impressions of his, of his story or, or what, what, what he's doing here. I, I have talked to him. Um, he is interested. He, um, uh, you know, he hasn't been able to do anything with us so he gets his work visa, all the paperwork done. So, um, so I don't know much about that part, but he, he seems to enjoy it here. He's uh, engaged with people. Um, uh, he hasn't been able to do anything. So, but in the system through which he came, that, that seems to be sort of a new tributary. Yeah, I probably can't detail that for you, yeah, but yeah. I'm glad he's here. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Last one, Herb. Look, I, apologies for trying to know, ending this on a somber note. At the beginning of your comments, you had mentioned the shootings in Buffalo and yeah. Texas. Um, Steve Kerr had some strong comments. Frank Reich had some strong comments. How much should coaches at professional levels use this platform to speak out on that type of violence? Yeah, I mean, I think everybody has their own opinion. I think the bottom line is uh, it's got to stop. And what can we do to help make it stop? I'm not sure I have the answer other than if we see signs of something, then as parents and as you know, teachers or whomever, uh, try to help that person out and get them get them into a place where they can get things straight. But right now, there's too many things happening <clears throat> up here in the cranial compartment that we need to that are that are killing people. Not good. Not good for whatever reason. It's not good, and it's more than it's ever been. And it's you know, it's got to stop. So. All right. Thank you. <coughs> Thanks,
talking into a camera. <laughs> it's kind of nice. All right, let's go. Hit me. Justin, how are you getting acclimated to, you know, a lot of the teammates here that you're with, a lot of the new guys that are new to the yeah. NFL? How, how are you just getting acclimated to everything? Yeah, um, I think everything is going well. I mean, the culture here is phenomenal. Um, all the resources in the world that you could ever ask for, great coaching. Um, the details matter. We pay attention to um, not only just getting to know your teammates and building the right culture, um, but it goes deeper than just the X's and O's and how you build a championship culture and how you build a championship team. So I've had a lot of fun playing in this defense. I've had a lot of fun getting to know my teammates. The locker room is great. It's full of a bunch of good guys. You've been super new here, and, and you know, we talked to you right when you signed. And now that you've gotten work hand in hand with Steve Spagnuolo, why do you think that this defense will be a fit for maybe some of the things that you do that? Yeah, um, I think it's because the defense is so versatile. And not only do we have like 100 plays that we're able to just game plan and pick and choose which weapons we want to use against opponents coming into the future. Um, but also taking advantage of opportunities like this where we get to play against our offense, which is no, undoubtedly one of the most firepower sacked offenses in the league. So when you get to play against those guys every day, you know, iron sharpening iron, it makes the whole team better. What's your, what's your early, I know it's very early, Jesse, but what's your early impression of some of the young guys in, in your secondary, whether it's Trim, Joshua? Uh, yeah. How do, you, how do you think they're doing so far, given back when you remember trying to be a rookie yeah. and everything is flying so fast? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, like I said, the game, the, uh, the playbook here is very deep. And it was deeper than what it was when I was a rookie back in Houston. And those guys are coming along really well with it. Um, the culture here is really good in the DB room. Guys ask questions. We're not afraid to go and help each other. Um, the unity is there. And um, like I said, Trent, um, Josh, Brian, all those guys are doing a great job. Who have, you, who have you leaned on during this process? And I mean, I'm sure as one of the veteran guys, you want to be a leader for this defense, you know? Um, so how, what's that process like? You know, because you got to earn that, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely you got to earn it. And you earn it every day, you know what I mean? Like today, you go out there, you want to be the guy, especially in my role on the back end, make all the calls, be confident in your calls. Um, be confident, have, you, have the trust of your teammates so your teammates know you're going to be where you're going to be um, and you're going to handle your responsibility on the field. That's what comes first. You know what I mean? And your leaders need to be your best players, but your best players also have to be your hardest workers. You know, so I live by that. How are you, how are you getting acclimated with, with uh, Spag, the system and his play calling, and you being able to, like you said, be the leader out there on the field where you can call the plays out? And yeah. Put plays in yeah, I love it, man. It's, it's, uh, it's electric, this defense, man. We got guys coming from all over the place, coverage spinning in different directions. Um, it's a, it's a very, this is undoubtedly going to be the most fun defense that I've played in so far. But I'm saying, how are you, I mean, how are you getting acclimated with, with, with the play call being able to, on the field, yeah. all the players out and put players in their position? Where are you at in percentage wise of yeah. the defense? Oh, um, up there. I mean, we still got to iron out some wrinkles, like some of the nuances of the coverage. But right now, I feel like I'm 90, 95% there. And you're going to earn the rest of that just through repetition. And so far, what I heard is training camp is pretty fast here. <laughs> They're going to get a lot of plays in uh, to iron all those out. Yeah, did you talk about why did you say it was the most fun defense? Um, why did I say it was the most yeah, fun defense? Why do you think it's going to be the most fun Because you get to do a little bit of everything. You're not just playing deep. Um, you get to play man coverage. You get to play zone coverage. You get the blitz inside. You get the blitz outside. You get to do spin coverages. Sometimes the linebackers and safeties are trading responsibilities, corners and safeties trading responsibilities, guys going all over the place. And it's, it's really hard to get a read. I remember back in Houston, um, it felt like the last four years, we, been here almost every year except last year. Um, you know, it was really difficult to game plan um, when I was listening to our offensive meetings talking about the defense that was being run here just because there's so many different moving pieces that happen week to week. So now you get to be a part of it, got to see the system and how it works. And knowing that um, and having an opportunity to just be put in position and play by the playbook and play um, the defense that we're coached to play, as long as you do your job, you're going to have opportunities. Are, are there elements that is new for you too that, that you're going to be asked to do, you think? Yeah, um, here and there. I mean, I feel like there's bits and pieces throughout the course of my career, um, all the way dating back to college that you know, we've been able to do. Um, I'm not afraid to do anything. I'll, blow, I'll play zone, I'll play man, I'll blitz, I'll play in the middle of the field, I'll play deep half. You know, whatever it is that the coaches ask me to do, I'm confident to do it. And I want to ask you about, you know, obviously it's, it's not lost here that, that Tyron used to play the position you're playing. What's, is that in the back of your mind of replacing him at all? And no. No, I mean, it's the same thing that I said earlier. Like, me and Tyron know each other. Our families know each other. Um, my older brother was roommates with Tyron that freshman year in college. So, you know what I mean? I have a deep love and respect for him. Um, I don't treat myself as a comparison to Tyron or a comparison to any other player. 
I've always lived by the standard that you're playing the man that you look to, you're playing the man that you look to in the mirror. The Chiefs had done their homework on Lonnie before he got here. Yeah. They knew about him, but did they ask you for anything about Lonnie? And what would you tell Chiefs fans about what kind of player he is? Yeah, um, he aggressive, big dude. Um, shoot, man, probably like 6'3", maybe 215 pounds. Um, I think he's going to do well here with the amount of press that we play here. I think that's really strong in his utility belt because bigger receivers, um, really any receiver, just have a hard time getting around his frame. So I think that the coaches here are going to be able to coach him up really well. And as long as he keeps doing what he's doing and buying into the program, he's going to do well. We see the, we see the offensive guys you know, hang out outside of you know, being here. You said with, uh, being a leader for you, like how much of developing that chemistry not only on the field and off, and off the field? Oh, you can't underestimate how much building a team is being outside of the locker room. You know what I mean? So we had a bowling event a couple um, days ago. That was a lot of fun. Um, I've been in my history uh, going through the league. My first two years, we had a strong camaraderie in the DB room to where we did things, went, went on the weekly dinners, went to each other's house. And then I've been on some teams where we didn't do that. And you're able to see the fall off and difference in what it means to be teammates. Like you want to have such a closeness to your teammate that you know that when you know, I get on you, you get on me, it's coming out of love. You know what I mean? There's no friction there. So building that teammate, building that unit um, happens off the field just as much as it comes on the field. So team activities, we're going to have a cookout later, um, team dinners weekly, things like that, uh, extremely important. Just as Sam kind of mentioned, I know there's the easy comparison to Tyron, and you're kind of saying, you know, you're not really trying to be the next Tyron. So like, how eager are you for fans to kind of get to know what Justin Reed is about in a way? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, shoot, man. I'm extremely excited about it. I feel like I'm an energy guy. Um, and I believe strongly in you are what you put on tape. So fans will get a chance to see us when we start playing on a, we got a Sunday game and then a Thursday game right after that. So, you know what I mean? They're going to get a chance to see it. With, with, Couple every, more. with everything that you can anticipate before an off-season program, has there been anything that has sort of uh, affirmed your decision to, to join this team that makes you feel like uh, the decision back in March will continue to sort of just affirm what you wanted to see from this? Can you say that question one more time? With everything that you can anticipate when yeah. you make a decision in free agency, has mm -hmm. there been moments so far, but I guess between now and then, that have affirmed this is one of the reasons as to why you joined this team? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it goes back to the culture of the team. It goes back to playing in a defense like this under Spagnuolo's defense, playing under Coach Merritt. Um, shoot, man, ever since I got here, I didn't know what to expect coming to the Midwest. I've always lived in you know, hot states from Louisiana, played in Texas, went to California. Never had fall or winter before, you know what I mean? So I didn't know what to expect coming here, but um, I've been living on cloud nine the entire time. I haven't had any complaints. Um, the nutrition staff, the training staff, the weight room staff all do a phenomenal job. Um, so everything has felt right. Okay, just to let you end on that one. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Hi guys. Can you talk about um, just what uh, you got out of the guys working out together in Texas and, and why you wanted that to be the setup? Yeah, well, I mean, first off, I think we got some chemistry in um, just getting with those guys um, for uh, almost a month and uh, working out with them, throwing with them. We'd go to lunch, go to dinner, stuff like that. You kind of build that chemistry. And I think a big part, uh, especially our offense, is having that chemistry on the field, being able to know what the guy's doing without having to talk about it. Um, and uh, I think it's translated. I mean, so far in the practice that we have, we feel like we're on the same page and, and uh, kind of having that chemistry, and we're going to keep building on that. Patrick, what well, been the first look at the team this new offense? They seem like you're really in sync with Marquez. Um, what, what, what led to that, do you think, to so soon to be able to have such a rapport right now? 
Yeah, I think it's been really cool. Um, I mean, those are, I mean, him, Juju, some of those guys were down there, I mean, every day pretty much. And uh, uh, I think the first day, Juju had a big day. He got a lot of big catches down the sideline. And then the second day, Marquez got a big day. And so uh, I think you, you, we, that's what you're going to see at this offense this year is it's going to be everybody. It's not going to be one guy. I um, mean, obviously, Travis is going to still get a lot of completions, a lot of yards. But I think the whole receiving room um, is going to have big days. And I think that could be something that we can use to our advantage. What do you think being able to just spread the Yeah, I think I think we're going to be different. I think at the you saw last year, um, defenses had started to formulate a good game plan at least at the beginning of the season of trying to kind of maintain stopping Tyreek and stopping Trav, and uh, we had to find ways to have success other ways so we can get those guys open. I think this year we'll be coming different where you're not going to know where you're going to get the the deep ball from. You're not going to know where you're going to get the short pass from because we have a lot of different guys that can do it all. So uh, I think having all those guys, I think it'll help us get more of those deep throws that we've been accustomed to. Coach Reed talked about your maturity. Um, yeah, yeah, we talked. We, we talked about it, and he he had the trust in me to get the guys there. Um, I thought it was cool because when you're in the building and um, you you see each other, but you're still with the different coaches. Uh, you have certain meetings you have together, certain meetings you don't have together, and to be able to get down there and just be with those guys at all times, talk through how I see routes, and then they, them get to go to the virtual meetings and listen to how the coaches explain routes. It helps you get a, a, a better understanding for each other. So that, I think that was the biggest thing is um, him trusting in us to get our workouts in, get our bodies right. Uh, run the routes, get a head start, and then when we got in here, we, we could play fast, and uh, I think that's what we've done. How much have you been able to find out about guys that you hadn't played with? Yeah, I found out a ton. I mean, these guys are smart. I think that's that's been a big thing for me. Um, Marquez, Juju, Corey Coleman, all, all these all these guys, that these new guys that we have in the building, they're smart, they work hard, and they want to compete. Um, there's, it's a very deep receiving room. I mean, uh, it's hard to tell which guys are, are going to make it because we have so many good receivers. And so uh, that's what you want. You want that competition. You want guys competing every single day to try to make the roster because they're going to help us in the end. Is that a new trend now? I mean, you know, you doing that, taking your players down to uh, Texas, Deshaun taking his teammates down to the Bahamas and stuff like that to where uh, not only are you building rapport, but again, you are getting a chance to get, get to know these players and and see what the like dislikes are, see what you can and can't do with the players and stuff. Yeah, and I think you see in especially those two situations, but a lot around the NFL is you're getting a lot of different new quarterbacks and new places. You're getting new receivers and new places. And so you want to build that chemistry fast because you want to have success. And uh, I think the best way to do that is get away from the building. I mean, in the building, you, everybody's in their P's and Q's. Everybody's trying to be the best they can be. But you want to be with someone outside the building, see what their family's like, see what how, kind of how what they like, what their interests are. Um, and uh, for me, uh, just being able to have them down in Texas, I got to show them a little bit of the Dallas Mavericks and everything like that. So we uh, we, we get to show them uh, how, how we do it down in Texas, too. But also, there's footage of you at the, at the soccer game with them. I mean, mm -hmm. how often do you see yourself doing that throughout the year, you know, with, with your team mm -hmm. and stuff like that, attending events like that? Yeah, I mean, that's going to be important. Um, especially getting to them to see KC and the passion that the fan bases have out here. Uh, I mean, they, they want to be a part of this just as much as anybody, and uh, they are now. And so uh, for, for me, just I, I ask guys, I'm just like, hey, I'm going to start game, you want to come? And that thing was full. Everybody wanted to be there. Um, and so uh, stuff like that, we went to Royals games. Uh, we, we've, we're going to get around the – Get around the city and get to see everything about it. And I'm gonna introduce these guys to everything, and they'll fall in love with it just like I did. And is, there, is there a, is there a <laughs> early <laughs> some, some, Sorry, is there? Pat, there's there's a lot of discussion about Justin Ross and his process to get here. It's, mm -hmm. it's obviously early, but just what are your first impressions of passing the ball to him, seeing how he sees the offense, and obviously knowing the talent he was in college mm -hmm. before the injury. Yeah, I mean, you still see the talent. I think that's the first thing. I mean, I know people saw the catch on Twitter, but I mean, it's just the way he catches the football out of the air. Um, he snatches it. There's no drops, everything like that. Now it's about him learning the NFL offense. I mean, that's how it is for every rookie when they come in is you, you don't see that that top talent that they can be until they learn and they can just play fast. Um, and I, I think you, I think you, you've seen that. You've seen the splashes of how talented he can be. And then you've seen times where he's just, just barely off of what we wanted. And he learns from that. He doesn't make that same mistake. Um, and so just the more and more reps that he gets, I, I can only imagine how good he's going to be because of the talent that he, that he possesses. There, there's, a, there's, a, there's an interesting dynamic going on where, you know, most of the guys are here, obviously, on offense. Mm -hmm. Can you see the difference of the cohesion and, and the offensive line considering there were so many new guys last year? Mm -hmm. And then... How many? How much discussion have you had with Orlando about his situation, and how eager are you to sort of get him back into the fold? Yeah, I mean, I mean, you see the offensive line, you see the difference. Already, I mean, 
it's clear. Those guys are like one unit, man. They're always together. Uh, they're always they go to different events together. They eat dinners like once a week. I mean, they're 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 if you talk about offensive line in a unit, I mean that's what it is, and uh, that's why we have they did so well last year, and they'll continue to do well. And Orlando, I talk to him like once at least once a week. I mean. He, he's a guy that loves football. There's no doubt about that. And then that off the field stuff, I mean, you, that happens in every organization, every team. Um, but I, I know he wants to be here. He wants to be a Kansas City Chief. And uh, I mean, he, he wants to be on that football field more than anybody. I know we got a couple, I know a couple, couple more guys. But, Let's move it around a little bit. Uh, but of course, you've got the, you know, the match coming up next week. Brady's been you know, doing some stuff on social media, probably some stuff on social media. What, what exactly, how did that come about? And then, you know, what can we expect? Yeah, I've been in talks with those guys for a couple of years uh, now, and it worked out well where I was able to go out there, play the game that I love in, in golf, uh, play against other quarterbacks, which will be fun, and we give a lot back to charity, which is a big part of that thing. Um, and so uh, to be able to do that, it's going to be really cool to get out there with those guys and uh, me and Josh go out there, get a dub. Uh, against the old guys, uh, they, they, they've been trying to talk trash, but you can tell it's either scripted or old jokes that they found on Twitter. So uh, when we get on that golf course and we get to really talk trash, I know me and Josh are going to do that, and we're going to win the win the match as well. Go ahead. Here are your last four. You had a throw today to 84 Justin Watson in the mm -hmm. corner of the end zone there. At this time of year, especially with new players that you're working with and first time young players, how important are plays like that to building confidence in those guys, and how important is it to the receivers to get confidence in plays like this? Yeah, that, I mean, Watson's been a, I mean, a, a pleasant surprise, what they say, a pleasant surprise. I mean, that, that, that dude can roll. I, I remember he came down to Texas, and I threw with him the first day, and I, I called I called Veach, and I was like, wait, how fast is this guy? Because he was, he was running so fast that I was late on all my throws. Um, and so he's got out here these first few days, had two great days. Um, we have a lot of, like I said, we have a lot of guys in that receiving room that, that, like, that are going to make, if they don't make our team, they're going to make other teams. Um, and so uh, we have a lot of talent in that room. Um, we have reps like this where we're rotating a lot of different receivers in. You get to see the guy step up and make plays. Um, and uh, today he made a big play in the, the corner of the end zone. So uh, it, it is important to have these guys, let them get chances. And when they get their chances, they're going to go out and try to make the most of them. Patrick, you were involved a lot with the HBCU Bowl and everything. Mm -hmm. Four HBCU players drafted, uh, you know, this past year. Just how happy are you to see the progress involved with HBCUs with everything you've been and, and your involvement with, and then see the Chiefs actually draft the HBCU player first as well, you know, and the history of Chiefs with HBCU. How, how were you excited? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it was super exciting for me. I mean, when you look back and they didn't have a player drafted last year, uh, and then now to have some have four guys going, I mean, you just wanted to shed light on these guys. I mean, they're, they're guys that are, are super talented. Um, they're they're playing in a competitive uh, competitive division, and uh, you want to give them that platform. And I think the HBCU bowl game gave them that, and you saw that they got on that platform. They made plays happen. Uh, they had the combine as well, and then you got four guys getting drafted and more in, in camps. And so uh, uh, I think just kind of giving them that light and then letting them go do it, what they've been doing, and they've been doing it for a long time. So uh, we gave them that platform, and they made the most of it. Patrick, uh, how much more do you enjoy this offseason? I mean, one, there's no more COVID, so you can get together with the guys, right? Mm -hmm. And you're not dealing with rehab and some foot surgery. Mm -hmm. But Sterling's a little bit older, so you're not having to deal with the newborn moments that every parent knows. You're married. You know, some of those pieces are falling into place. So just – are you feeling more settled as a person, and how does that maybe help you uh, as a football player? Yeah, I mean, first off, the no, the no surgery and being able to train right out the gate uh, was huge for me. I feel like I'm in a way better spot uh, physically. Uh, I feel like my golf game's in a better spot. I got to play more. Um, but, uh, no, it's, it's been cool. I mean, uh, getting to hang out with all these guys in Texas, um, Sterling, uh, obviously being older, she has that personality now. She, she can walk. It's like she started walking, and then all of a sudden I'm, like, I'm like having to play defense because she's everywhere. She's sprinting everywhere. Um, but uh, just, I mean, it's been it's been cool to be back to normal, uh, back to where you can hang out with these guys, hang out with the family, hang out with the friends, and uh, and play football. I mean, you can't beat it. Sam, I wanted to ask just one more thing about getting together with the guys. Are you, like, calling plays down there? Like, how, how do you organize that aspect of it? Yeah, we started out, um, we were just going through plays. So we, we talk about the route, how we run the route versus these coverages, uh, how we run the route based off what, what the concept is. And then by the end of it, we call we would call the play and then talk through it two, two guys at a time. Shane was with me a lot of the time. We had quarterbacks down there. So we, we could really throw like two guys at a time. They could run the routes off each other. Um, and I thought I thought it was a good way to like I said it, I mean there's one there's one way when the coach is teaching it and, there, and then there's a way whenever I get to explain how I'm thinking and uh, their job is to, to learn how to run it the how way the coach the coach wants and then to be on the same page as me and I thought that was a good way to start that. Last one, Herb. Well, it, was, it, was oh, like a, it was like a month long though. Yeah, it was like a month long. We I think we did four weeks and and those guys were I mean they were there pretty much the whole time. Herb. 
Patrick, on, on Tuesday, you took to Twitter and expressed uh, condolences and some heartbreak over what occurred down there in Texas. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's only like five hours from the mm -hmm. house. How much do you plan to do anything um, for that community? Or are there plans to do something for the community? As a yeah, yeah. There, there's, there's plans. I mean, there's. We have people on from Texas Tech that have already reached out to me that are from that area that are that have that they have great plans with their foundations of giving back and to those, those families. Um, but I mean, you just you want to. We have to find a way as a nation that we we can bring this. I mean, you know, it's never going to completely stop, but but lower the the cases of all these people going out and and shooting, especially especially these these kids. I mean, they have no chance. I mean, they're just living their life trying to trying to grow up and as a father now I mean it's it's scary I mean it's scary for all of us that whenever you're taking your kids to school and you want it to be a safe place and stuff like this is happening day after day and I, I we just don't want to come people say but you don't want to come numb to it you don't want to just be able to oh condolences and then all of a sudden we're practicing the next day and like nothing happened I mean you want to make sure that we're we're holding people accountable that we do whatever the steps are I don't know the steps I'm not going to act like I do to to try to minimize this as much as possible all right thank you thank you, thank you.
Yeah, we did it, huh? Hello, hello. hello. There, was a, there was a Vegas line? Under, over, under? <laughs> 2.30 was the line. Those, those NFL PA rules, man. You got to get out the door at the same time, man. Everybody's on schedule. What you, what you talking about? <laughs> oh, yeah, my bad. What's uh, good? Travis, this is a, your first chance to be around a lot of these young players at, this, at these OTAs yeah. these, these couple weeks. What have you seen so far? Out of some of the, the new guys, especially. Um, guys flying around, and that's all you can really ask for is, uh, you know, they come into the building, they understand uh, the type of energy that we have here. Um, a lot of the new guys, uh, especially the young guys coming from college ball, um, you know, they're, they're not used to how we work here. And it's just a little bit more uh, professional, a little bit more attention to detail, but we still like to fly around and have a good time. And um, that's what you saw today, just guys trying to, trying to get into it and uh, enjoy, you know, being around each other and building this thing. Travis, what do you see out of the, a lot of the new receivers changing most about the way you guys are able to operate? Um, well, I mean, we're still at the beginning stages of, you know, the, the installs, the, the beginning part of the playbook, just trying to get guys to, to understand where to line up and how to, how to, you know, play fast from there. So it's, uh, it's still developing, but it's just, it's, it's awesome to see uh, guys like, Quez and, and Juju come in with the type of mentality they, they've, they've came in with, the professionalism, the want to, to know how to get things going, and then just the work ethic. Out there getting a little uncomfortable every single day to you know really build that, that machine so we're out there uh, playing fast. We asked, we asked Coach and, uh, and Patrick about you guys being down in Texas. Uh, how much carryover do you think oh, yeah. you know, being out there? Well, I mean, it helped get guys uh, rolling a little bit quicker, got us acclimated um, as like teammates you know the chemistry was already there great great guys are coming into the building and um, from there it's just you know figuring out uh, how coach Reed wants to utilize us all and uh, yeah that's what that's where we're at right now with the uh, with the new guys having wrinkles every year in the offense but I, I wonder if you feel like by the time this is all said and done this might be a little more a little more just because of the that's the excitement in my mind. I, I think it, it has to be a new offense. I think that's what Coach Reed and the offensive staff uh, does, and even Spags on the defensive side. You know, they they look at the personnel that they have, um, and don't get caught up in their specific scheme. They try and m build a scheme around the pieces that they got, and uh, and that's going to be the excitement of you know what's new this year. Is teams are going to have to see how we're how we're going to come out and attack them. And um, with a guy like one five out there who who knows where to go with the ball, I think it's. Uh, I think it can be an advantage for sure. Travis, how much of that do you think involves you and your role, your responsibilities? I hope, like, a, I hope a whole lot. Yeah, you ask me. I want to be out there every, every chance I can get to try and help this team win, man. I, I just mean in terms of, like, if you're saying the offense is new, if it has to sort of morph into something different, how much do you think that involves you, even though there are new pieces sort of around you? Yeah, I feel like I've had to evolve week in, week out, year in, year out. That's just the mentality that I have to always try and find a new way that Coach Reed can – Utilize me. Um, that's kind of been my uh, where I where I, I'm I'm most prideful is be able to move all over the field in the backfield, out wide, uh, obviously in the traditional tight end situations, um, and that's really this entire offense has evolved into everybody being everywhere, um, attacking you at, at, at with all these different routes, and and you know what that's that's why I love being here because you get that opportunity to um, always get the defense to second guess exactly what you're doing. I mean, it's still it's still fun out there. I mean, it's still high energy, guys flying around, enjoying you know making plays. Um, a lot of a lot of thinking right now. You know, in the beginning stages of the playbook, guys not just out there you know playing fast and fun. They're really more so thinking about exactly how they are going to run a certain route or how they're going to get lined up and leaving the huddle, trying to you know just piece together what they just heard. So it's just. Uh, Trying to keep everybody, you know, still in the mode of enjoying what they're doing out there, uh, and let them know that this uh, this is fun, man. When we're rolling, it's uh, it's a blast. Travis, to see Jody out there again, you know, what's that? Jody mean? F, man. Eight eight, man. He's uh he's one of the hardest workers I know, and it's uh, he's relentless with it. He, he's his uh, his his want and knowledge for the game to always try and get better, and then on top of that, to pass it along to guys that you know uh, haven't had the reps. 
You know, you can see that in him and being a leader, and it's just uh, it's fun watching him uh, get back out there and have some more fun because when he's he's flying around out there, man, he's there's a lot of energy out there on the field. Trent, what, was your, what was your first reaction to Tyreek being gone, and what kind of communication have you had with him? Man, it was uh, I mean, it was I don't want to say disappointed, but it was I, I was sad, man. It was you know I've 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 came into this building for the past I think what six years, seven years. Uh, going to work with that guy, and it's just you know it's, it's just different world uh, thinking about what this team would be without him. But now it's um, we're rolling, and uh, and I can see a vision for sure. Are you in touch with him a bit? Um, here and there for sure. Yeah, definitely. I mean that's that's a relationship I don't think I'll ever I'll ever lose for sure. What was your uh, what was your favorite part about the time together with the guys today? Um, just to see how hard they work. Really, their attention to detail, that was exciting for me to see, you know, we're getting professionals coming in this building that want to, want to, you know, get better, find ways to, to be great. The Justin Frost catch on, on Twitter, you, you know, I saw it, and Coach Reed requested more juice. What was it? Like? More juice, man. He was out there just, he, you could tell he had been through a few routes in a row, and then he runs this double move deep route, and he just catches it with ease and just, just, just gasping for air. I'm like, man, you make a catch like that, you got to let every, everybody know what you just did, man. You can't just make a casual catch. like I'm like, damn, that was kind of deflating to see you just kind of run back to the huddle like that, man. I need you to fuel me with life, man. Get hype. Chad's 36. Winchester's a couple of weeks older than you are. You're number three as far as the oldest guys in this team. You know, this is voluntary. What keeps you out there on the older voluntary OTAs? And I love it, what man. What keeps you young, man? I love it, man. I've, uh, I've always had a, a love for competition, getting better, the, the work ethic um, that I've gotten really from my family, my brother. I, I saw how professional he was when, even when he was in college and the type of attention to detail he had. And when you do the things, you start to lead your life in the right way. It just, it's a steady incline of, uh, of getting better at whatever craft that you choose. And um, I chose football, and I, I feel that year in, year out. And uh, I, I just love it, man. I love it. And on top of that, I mean, we got new guys in this building. I'm, I'm trying to, you know, win some ball games here. So you're, you're going to see me in this building, you know, just trying to help out any way I can. You talked about getting better. Um, I got no, I was going to say, are there things you have to do different now at your age? Just keep yourself kind of depressed. I think the biggest thing is all recovery. It's all just, uh, you know, making sure that the body's at its peak at all times. And that's the, that's the biggest thing. That's probably the, the one thing that I've asked uh, tight ends or, or the guys before me, um, even my brother who's two years older than me, kind of going through the same things. It's just, you know, trying to, trying to find ways to recover and get the body back to 100%, um, day in, day out, week in, week out. And uh, you just focus on certain things throughout your career that you know work for you. And, uh, yeah, I've, uh, I think I found a group that's, uh, that's worked pretty good. You talk about getting better. Uh, Titan University is coming back. Oh, yeah. Uh, how much do you just embrace the camaraderie and also embrace the mentorship of the other Titans? I'm, to be honest, man, I don't even see it as mentorship for me. I, I'm like a little kid uh, at tight end you, man. It's just so much fun being around uh, guys that, uh, that all, you know, are working for the same thing. We're all trying to do the same thing. We're all trying to get better at the same craft. And it's, um, it's fun just, you know, passing around the knowledge that I have, and, but also, you know, absorbing everybody else's stories, their, what they've been through in their journeys. Um, hopefully we get some, uh, the, some, some new faces to speak this year, and it's uh, – and it's going to be it's going to be a blast. I already know it is. It it was last year, and I'm pretty sure everybody's pumped up for it again this year. Actually, there might have been other things. First, do you have any reaction to Kittle basically saying that you're criminally underpaid after seeing what happened to the wide receivers? And then also, uh, what are your plans for watching the match next week? Yeah, Kittle's. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate Kittle saying that because you know that's my guy, and he always wants to see every tight end get paid as much as you know they. The, their production is, but at the same time, um, I signed my contract, understanding what uh, what I had, and uh, at the same time, you know, I um I put a lot into this man, and and, and money is uh, I, I money in my mind is almost a, a secondary at this point in my career. I'm just I'm I'm here for the legacy, and I'm here to try and make the Kansas City Chiefs the best team possible, man. So I'm that's my main focus. That's why I'm here. And uh, what was the second question again? What are your plans for watching the match next week? Um. I'm gonna try and be out there, man, and heckle Pat and the and the gang and see see if I can get any action on on live TV. I have no idea, actually. Um, <laughs> haven't haven't really thought much about that. Haven't really thought much about that. I hope Pat brings it home. Him and Josh. How's the game? Uh, I mean, 
we already won one tournament on that course, so who knows, man? <laughs> you might get a second dub. Travis, I don't know if you've seen this, but there was an interview today with Deshaun McCoy where he was talking about his time here in Kansas City. Mentioned that he kind of butted heads with Eric Bieniemy, and he says the reason that he hasn't gotten a head coaching job is because of the relationships he has with players. I know you—he's not the easiest guy to play for, right? I right. mean, do you think that has hurt him in his? Uh, I haven't seen the interview. I haven't seen the interview. Um, I uh, I think everybody has their own personal relationships, you know, throughout their journey throughout life. I know um, some people that have said bad things about others that I've absolutely adored. Um, and um, I think this would be a situation if he did say I don't even really know what he said but if he's saying you know bad things about him I know I have a great relationship with him um, I've even butted heads with him but at the same time I know what that guy's about and that guy's about working hard for the for the whole of the team and making sure that everybody's accountable and on top of that he's just a passionate guy he's a competitor you know one of the best competitors that, I, that I've ever met because is how hard he works and how much uh, attention to detail that he has. You spent your entire career in and around with him. Mm -hmm. You don't think anything you've seen from him in dealing with players should prevent him from being a head coach? Not a chance, no. A couple more guys. Well, Pete and then Sam. Uh, I saw that uh, the Eagles had drafted center. Your brother was seemed, seemed to be all about that. And last year, took Noah Gray. Just how has he been developing under you? Uh, had kind of a quiet year, but it, it seems like this could be a, a bigger year for him. Oh, yeah. I mean, Noah's... Man, it's it's fun. We got a fun tight end room, man. With Noah Jody uh, on on the rise and just seeing them develop uh, week in week out, um, it's uh, it's cool to see Noah his professionalism in the building because he's far beyond my uh, <laughs> silly self, especially my my rookie year and my second year in the league. Uh, he's way more professional than I ever was. So seeing him progress as fast as he as he has, and last year being very productive for us in a lot of situations. Um, especially even when the game is on the line, you know what I mean? It's, uh, it's cool to see where he's, he's gotten, and it's, you know, it's going to be fun to see where he takes it to the next level because uh, his work ethic, I mean, when you work that hard and you have that much attention to detail, you have no, uh, no choice but to go up, man. Will, they, will Jody and Noah be a tight end university? Sure. Um, I, that's a question you have to ask them. I know they got the invite for sure. Sam, how long were you? Um, I think it was about two weeks I was down there, uh, like uh, three days out of the week. I think that was probably, it was like a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday for two, three weeks. You just mentioned the professionals in the first two years you had in the league, but do you feel like just making a point to attend some, I mean, you know already have a connection with Patrick, obviously, making a point to that is just part of, you know, setting an example? I'm sorry, I, I didn't. Do you feel like attending that, you know, is it part of just trying to set an example? Oh, just showing up I'm th down in Dallas? I think that, I don't know. I, I was trying to get better, too. I mean, heck, if Pat Stone, I'm, I'm down to go get some routes or loosen it up, you know, go to work, throw the ball out in the yard, you know? Just, heck, I'm, let's just go play catch. I don't care, man. All right, guys. Thank you. Right on. Thank you.